Hello, good evening. You're watching the news in Breeze live on Active TV. Live on Facebook, Active TV. On Instagram, Active TV Official. And on YouTube, Active TV News. My name is Mami Abbasi. In today's story, Active News went around to the various education centers to bring you more stories on how it went. Also, we spoke to the parliamentary candidate for Anya Sotom for MPP about the faulty traffic light at panel. We show you how it went. In our first story, voters' registration is ongoing, um, but some centers are doing something worth recommending, especially the Sotom number two registration center. Let's look at it. This last of Sotom. Mm. Last of Sotom. We have two. We have one. They did it the first week, and this is the, the second uh, last of two. So we are for last of Sotom two. We can see the place is very well organized. How, how were you able to achieve this? Um, I can say, you know, we all know that how the disease is. So every morning we talk to them about the social distancing and then uh, they're able to, to listen to our advice and it's working. Okay. So how has the feedback been? How many people have you registered so far, please? Um, so far, I can't tell, but yesterday we were able to register 115. By the day before yesterday, 146. That's why we raised for the whole day. Yesterday, because of the rain, we need to stop small. Uh, but for now, I don't know how much uh, the, the, the number we have for, for now. Yeah. Okay, so um, I can see as they are chipping in, you've, you've been able to distance them very well. Um, has there been any agitation, like any chaos so far here? Not really. Not really. You know, uh, at some centers, what happens is that. Um, the research officers, some also give numbers, or if not research officers, sometimes the opinion leaders give numbers, and then some also come and sleep overnight. So in the morning, they uh, problem. So we, we told them, we don't give numbers. When you come, as we organize, we, we, we will serve you. So over here, there's no agitation. They, they comport themselves well. Bye bye, around 11. Okay, now, um, oh yeah, what's your number? So also number there. Okay, bye, not number NASA. But so far, registration will cost them out. Oh, yeah. Baby, are you cool? How uh, will be any more? What about her time? I'm about to be 8 o'clock. What about her time? What about her time? Yes, I'm cool. 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 I'm the, the the feeling here is very good. It's cool. It's kind. It's it's very nice. Uh, no route be a good good be uncle. So I. A few weeks ago, Active News team brought to you a report on faulty traffic lights at Fan Milk Junction off the Pokwasi Road. Today, we followed up and spoke to the parliamentary candidate for NPP at Anya Sotom constituency. Radio and television. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. And I'm happy you are in my community uh, to take note of how things are going. Yes, um, I think road safety is very important, no matter where it is. Uh, you know, even in your own home, if you are not careful, you can knock your child down. You know, so road safety is very important. Uh, with regards to our traffic light issues, I'm aware. I wouldn't say I'm not aware. I'm fully aware. I've asked questions where I have to. I've had visitations with the uh, road traffic and safety people and urban roads, and we are still working out to see how best we can work, get it going quickly. Um, and, and, and what is important also, regardless of the traffic light issues, our drivers should slow down, especially when you're approaching traffic lights that are non functional, uh, because when there's lights out, it won't work. So, in, in, in all honesty, every driver approaching a traffic light which is non-functional, I will plead with you, come down on your speed as you approach, and the rules still hold. Whether there's a traffic light or not, you have to watch before you cross. So that's what I can say with regard. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Some voters registration centers are doing and getting it right, especially when it comes to observing protocols like the Sotom number two constituent um, registration center. But then the question is 
says, what are others not getting? Why are there still chaos and no social distances? Protocols are not observed at certain registration centers, especially the Afiyama North Daughters Registration Center at Pokwati. We have a regular panel here, Mr. Kojoba, to share with us and tell us what others are not getting right. Kojo, good evening. Good evening, Mami. Good evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, call setting and then near call around your call various registration centers. What do you say? So far, all the centers we went to, the only one was recommended. Hey, so maybe others are doing it, we haven't seen. Like, when you go there, there are seats where the social distancing is observed, they have someone. Obana, so you are not a nose mask. They let the person quickly come to you. If you are having it, you wear it. If you are not having it, they have, they'll ask you to use your handkerchief to cover, uh, close, um, cover your nose and your mouth. There's this lady that got there, and you can see says she doesn't have a nose mask, but she was using a handkerchief on her nose. So you realize that there is water there. When you go there quickly, you are asked to go and wash your hands. But then, Another voters registration center we went to. Pokwasi Afiyama North. Well, I don't know what they are not getting. The place, no social distancing, no nest. There's buckets, but people choose to wash their hands when they want. There's when people choose to wear no mask. You can you can even count the number of people wearing no mask. It's it's just a handful. You want to know your general overview of the voters registration. Uh, mommy, I don't know whether I should go the local language or I should go the English way. Okay. Um, I think uh, some people in authority are relaxing. A lot of people are relaxing because the easy told us that at every registration center there's going to be a security personnel and then a personnel from the Ghana Health Service, and then one other one, I'll think of. I wouldn't cut you short. Um, when you go to that firm, no, registration center, there is a police woman, but she's sitting somewhere on concerned, as though there's nothing at stake. That is exactly what I'm saying. Some people have relaxed in performing the duties assigned them. It's as simple as that. Yes. I've also myself visited a lot of uh, registration centers, and what you are talking about is exactly what I also saw in those uh, registration centers. I have been to Kaswa de Pungpuhi, uh, even Kaswa de Pungpuhi, there, there was this drought. Uh, the policeman was just sitting down. We went to him to ask him one or two stuff. He told us to not be able to speak unless uh, uh, he seeks permission from the uh, is it the district commander or the something, something? I said, ah, master. But you are the one sitting here. You are, he was just relaxed like this and watching them. Policeman. Who has been assigned to make sure peace prevail? There, is, there was this drought between the one NDC man and then one NDC man. The NDC man thinks the MPP man has, uh, is trying to, you know, push some people through the queue so that they will register fast and then go. So there was this fracas between them and the policeman was just sitting like this, relaxed, watching. So I asked myself, is this man going to be paid? Policeman, Kaswa du Pongpehi, yes. You see, and most of the centers have visited. You realize that, yes, some of them, you, you see them standing, controlling the crowd, I mean, asking people to space out and stuff. Other places too, I mean, it's an eyesore. So what just do you think? sitting down, relaxed. What do you think is the problem? What I think the problem is it is not about motivation because I learned um, what the police are taking for that duty. It's, it's something good. You see, I don't know whether it is tiredness. Usually, the, this man that I'm talking about is an old man around, um, I would say old. He's around, you could see that he's around 40, 50 days, late 40s to 50. So, uh, probably he was tired. But it was in the morning too. It was in the morning. Now, one other problem that I also observed going around was that you realize that people come to the centers very early. 
to kill for others who were asleep. So they use stones to, 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 to kill for them. Okay. Now, when those people come, apparently they've collected their money already. Okay. So when they come, they say, oh, oh, then they take up the stones. Then, So it looks like those who, who were there early in the morning themselves okay. have to be in the queue for very long hours because when you came, you saw some stones in front of you yes. and the stones have suddenly turned into human beings. So you have to wait and being like you and i think that is one of the reasons why there, there has been some uh, there has been petty routes in some of the registration centers because me for instance i work and you don't expect me to kind of come and queue the whole day just to register i will agitate definitely sure. huh. and then some of the centers to that we went to um you realize that there is this long winding queues mm. my problem is before this election uh, sorry, before this uh, registration uh, exercise, the EC conducted a pilot project. Now, the EC knows the number of people the BV the machine can register at, on a day, in a day. Now, I've learned it's about 100 or so. So, when the people come, just give them numbers, up to 100. The rest Tell the rest to go home. So. Tomorrow morning, let them come. You get in so that the hundred you'll be able to take them off in the system, and then the next day another batch come, you register for but they allow all of them to come to the center and you see this commotion route stuff, but noise most of the places we've been to. I learned some a friend told me in one registration center at Accra, they are just following the protocol. Yeah. And you know, assuming I come early in the morning and I know I'm the, let's say, fifth or tenth. I know definitely I'll, I'll, I'll register and go home early. But suddenly I see some people in front of me. What will happen? I will agitate. Oh. I'll begin to talk loud. Then insult follows and whatever, whatever, whatever. Be, then it becomes okay. something else. So I think this commotion, this confusion that is going on in the various registration centers, I think I, 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 I will partly blame the EC. And then the security officers over there. Some of them are doing their work very well. Others too um, are, are so relaxed. Like this Afiaman incident that you just spoke about. Sure. And that's who has been assigned at the registration center for you to check people coming in their temperature. You are relaxing somewhere. They are not washing their hands. You are not checking their temperature. Sure. So what will happen by evening? It means if just one person has the COVID-19. Those around, including the EC officials, are going sure. to be infected by the close of You see, the funny thing is, you are not forced to wear the nose mask when you're in the queue. But the moment you get closer to the EC, or when it's your turn, then the they officers, force you to wear then it. they make you wear it. It just means they don't imagine think it. about the people in the queue. Just imagine it. Meanwhile, the person not wearing the face mask is standing behind someone or in front of someone. Have you given a thought to that? No. But you think the EC uh, official is so important that oh, they will do it. you have to wear it. It's so bad. It's so, so, so bad. It's so bad and it's so unfortunate that this is happening. And then I think for, uh, we just heard yesterday that there has been some gunshot, uh, whatever, whatever, at Kaswa. I think one of the reasons for those incidents happens to be suspicion. Okay. People have become suspicious of the other, especially the NDC, the MPP. We, we've been hearing reports of bashing people, bashing people, and stuff to consequences to other consequences and stuff. I think that is how the Kaswa incident began. And then it, it unfortunately it ended in, in, in this, what we are seeing now. So I think the overall thing, the political parties are the major stakeholders. They have to understand what is going on. They don't have to incite the people one against the other. I said we are Ghanaians first before MPP or NDC. Sure. You see, so if just for registration, someone must die or someone must, 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 must kill someone, someone must be made, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't augur well. It doesn't augur well at all. So I'm pleading um, to the authorities that at least um, the, 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 the IGP, not the IGP, the various regional commanders, they should speak to their people. That's it. This is the reason why we are sending you to this place. I think 
going forward, what you have to do is, when you go to any registration center, you see the policeman just sitting down, relaxed or asleep. Take a photograph of that person. Oh. We we'll put it on on, on 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 social media or TV, so that everybody will know that that man or that woman over there is just wasting our money. He's not doing what he has been assigned to do. Most definitely. Okay. Um, I I want you to touch quickly on the parliamentary candidates for MP at Anyaso from response towards the faulty traffic light at Anyaso. Yes. Um. That is um. Honorable Dr. Dexon Adomako Kisi. I think uh, he has spoken well in the sense that currently he's not, uh, he's not the MP. Yeah. And then uh, he's just a parliamentary candidate contesting, uh, preparing himself for a contest. I think he said he has spoken to um, some authorities Yes, and then and he's still following up. He's still following up. I think that is for now. That is the best he can do. That is the, because you don't expect him to use his pocket money to do that. And currently, as we speak, though his party is in power, he himself is just an ordinary man to say. So he doesn't have any, you know, executive power or, I mean, I hope you understand what I mean, yeah. to uh, have, make things happen. I think it is the sole responsibility of the assembly to do that. We have a municipal chief executive, the central, okay, who is alive and working. And I'm, I'm very hopeful the MC who knows about it. He has the power to, 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 to make sure things happen in the constituency. Unfortunately, or fortunately, he's also, uh, he was appointed by this present government, MPP government. So, I mean, all that is going on. The, 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 those around are watching. Do you think it will inspire them or to move them to vote for their party? It is no. I learned this traffic light has been faulty for about, you know, only God knows now. You see? And people are dying. So as a parliamentary candidate, I think that is the best he can do. Speak about the issue. Um, see one or two authorities. Speak to them about it. I think from the way he spoke, if he's in the position of the MC, I think you could have done better. You could do better than what the MC Don't you think is that it, he said that because he's not there yet? Well, I don't because think Because we hear so. them say that every time. Yes, I don't think so. Because, you see, when you look at the man's posture, the man's posture, the way he speaks, he's, he's a very, he's a, I think, he's a medical doctor or something, something yeah. like that. I'm not very sure of that. But looking at his humbleness and looking at what the man has achieved, not a political figure, looking at his records. I think when a man becomes an MP, he will do so much for the constituency. Okay. I don't want to move in the direction of campaigning for him, but trust me, if the people of Anya so to, to vote for this man, trust me, he's going to do wonders. You could see from his expression that he has the will to do, but there's no power behind that will. Well, I still insist that they all say the same. Well, well, well. But some, you know, do when they come, you see one or two differences. But that is how I say we this. Just hope, we sure. just hope he doesn't let your words down. Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm very sure he would eat. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Kojoba, for coming. Thank you very much, Mami. Okay. All right, so we just spoke to Mr. Kojoba, uh, our regular panel, and the, an educationist, um, this program. This news was proudly sponsored by General Laundry Cleaning Services, a crass market, and active video production. I was proudly clothed by Bimap Fashion. My name is Mani Abnafuke. Have a good evening and enjoy the rest. Active TV, seen beyond. Follow Active TV on all social media platforms and let's get interactive. On Facebook is Active TV. Share our post, like our page, and drop your comment. On YouTube is Active TV GH. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Put on the notification bell to be notified anytime we put a new video out there. And on Instagram is Active TV Official. Follow us, share our post, like our page, and drop your comment. And on Twitter is Active TV. Follow us, drop your comment, share our post, and like our page.
Native TV, Seen Beyond.